There are going to be five state questions on the 2018 Oklahoma general election ballot on Tuesday, November 6th. So I guess we better go over these. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Didn't I just do a state question episode? <laughs> oh, no. I'm really bad at this podcasting thing, aren't I? <laughs> well, let's get started. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. As I mentioned in the intro, there are going to be five state questions on the ballot this November. So as I like to do every political season, I'll go over each of the state questions. I'll read to you what they say, and then I will try to summarize them into <laughs> English. <laughs> Sometimes these state questions will use legal or other terminology that we as regular, everyday citizens of the great state of Oklahoma might not quite understand. I know I had to look up more than a few things this go around. All of these state questions will modify the Oklahoma Constitution, so if they pass, the Oklahoma legislature, unless noted in the question, cannot modify or change these easily. So each of these questions is a big deal. As I usually do in these readings, I won't be giving my opinion on them. That doesn't mean I don't have an opinion. It's just that I want to inform you of them so that you can make up your own mind. If you want to discuss these and want to know my opinion, I'll be posting each of these state questions in the Blog Oklahoma podcast Facebook group, so please feel free to join the group and let's have a conversation. Besides having the text of each question, I'll have links to each of them, including articles and opinions both for and against in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. I really encourage you to read through this material so that you can be an informed voter. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> we got five of these to go over. State question number 793. This measure adds a new section 3 to Article 20 of the Oklahoma Constitution. Under the new section, no law shall infringe on optometrists or opticians ability to practice within a retail mercantile establishment, discriminate against optometrists or opticians based on the location of their practice, or require external entrances for optometric offices within retail mercantile establishments. No law shall infringe on retail mercantile establishments' ability to sell prescription optical goods and services. The section allows the legislature to restrict optometrists from performing surgeries within retail mercantile establishments, limit the number of locations at which an optometrist may practice, maintain optometric license requirements, require optometric offices to be in a separate room of a retail mercantile establishment, and impose health and safety standards. It does not prohibit optometrists and opticians from agreeing with retail mercantile establishments to limit their practice. Laws conflicting with this section are void. The section defines laws, optometrists, optician, optical goods and services, and retail mercantile establishment. Shall the proposal be approved? For the proposal, yes. Against the proposal, no. Okay, uh, this was actually a really straightforward question, even though I had to do it in six takes. <laughs> um, this allows optometrists and opticians to practice in retail establishments like Walmart. Uh, but the legislature can put limits on them like they can't perform surgery at Walmart. Kind of smart. <laughs> and that's about it. So let's go to the next question. State question number 794. This measure amends the provisions of the Oklahoma Constitution that guarantee certain rights for crime victims. These rights would now be protected in a manner equal to the defendant's rights. The measure would also make changes to victims' rights, including 1. Expanding the court proceedings at which a victim has the right to be heard. 2. Adding a right to reasonable protection. 3. 
adding a right to proceedings free from unreasonable delay, 4. adding a right to talk with the prosecutor, and 5. allowing victims to review interview requests from the defendant's attorney without a subpoena. The Oklahoma Constitution currently grants victims rights to crimes victims and their family members. This measure would instead grant these rights to crime victims and those directly harmed by the crime. Victims would no longer have the constitutional right to know the defendant's location following arrest, during prosecution, and while sentenced to confinement or probation, but would have the right to be notified of the defendant's release or escape from custody. Under this measure, victims would have these rights in both adult and juvenile proceedings. Victims would be able to assert these rights in court, and the court would be required to act promptly. Shall the proposal be approved? For the proposal, yes. Against the proposal, no. This is also known as the Crime Victims' Rights Amendment, or Marcy's Law. If passed, this will expand the rights of crime victims and their families, uh, such as requiring victims and their families be notified of a defendant's release or escape from custody. Uh, Marcy's Law was named after Marjorie Nicholas, a college student in California who was stalked and killed by her ex-boyfriend in 1983. Only a week after her death, her mother was confronted by the accused murderer. The family had no idea he had made bail and was released. This started a movement to get versions of Marcy's Law enacted in states all around the country. State question number 798. This measure will add a provision to the Oklahoma Constitution to change the manner in which the governor and lieutenant governor are elected. Currently, voters cast one vote for their preferred candidate for governor and a separate vote for their preferred candidate for lieutenant governor. Under this measure, if approved, candidates for governor and lieutenant governor from the same party will run together on a single ticket and voters will cast one vote for their preferred ticket. This measure requires the legislature to establish procedures for the joint nomination and election of candidates for governor and lieutenant governor. If passed, this new election format will be used beginning in the 2026 general election cycle. Shall the proposal be approved? For the proposal, yes. Against the proposal, no. So this one is straightforward, but it would be a big change to Oklahoma's executive branch. Instead of voting for the lieutenant governor as an independent office, it will combine the governor and lieutenant governor into a single party ticket, much like how we vote for a president and vice president. If approved, it will not go into effect until 2026. State question number 800. This measure would create a fund called the New Oklahoma Vision Fund in the Oklahoma Constitution. Money could be appropriated to the fund. Beginning July 1, 2020, 5% of gross production taxes on both oil and gas would be deposited into the fund. After that physical year, the percentage would be increased by two-tenths percentage points each year. Other monies could be deposited into the fund if provided by law. The state treasurer would deposit 4% of the principal amount of the fund into the state general revenue fund each year. The fund would be subject to an investment standard known as the Prudent Investor Rule. The fund could be invested in stocks and similar securities. Not more than 5% of the monies in the fund could be used for payment of debt obligations issued by the state of Oklahoma, state government entities, or local government entities. Shall the proposal be approved? For the proposal, yes. Against the proposal, no. Okay, this one I had to do a little bit of research on, only because it was using uh, financial terms I didn't fully understand, such as what the prudent investor rule meant, or what exactly the principle of the fund was. I'll have links to these definitions in the show notes if you would like to learn more. The prudent investor rule is basically whoever is managing the fund can't be risky with the investments, <laughs> I think. <laughs> You can read more about it yourself. 
So if this passes starting in 2020, 5% of oil and gas production taxes the state receives will be put into a fund. That fund will be invested in stocks and securities, and then 4% of the principal of that fund will be moved into the state's general fund to be spent as needed. This does not raise or lower production taxes. It just saves a little bit of money for use later as a buffer against oil and gas production fluctuations. State Question 801. This measure amends Section 10 of Article 10 of the Oklahoma Constitution. It expands the use permitted for certain ad valorem taxes levied by a school district. Currently, tax revenue is placed in a building fund. The fund is changed to allow use for operations. The operations would be those deemed necessary by a school district. Shall the proposal be approved? For the proposal, yes. Against the proposal, no. All right, this one will allow schools to reallocate money from the building fund to other school operations. Currently, money raised by property taxes are placed into the building fund, and that money can only be used for things like uh, new construction, building repairs and maintenance, and utility cost. Uh, this change will give local schools more control over their budget. It does not raise or reduce any school funding or changes anyone's taxes. It just lets schools move some money around if they need to. Well, there you have it. The five state questions that will be on the November 6th ballot. If you have any questions or would like to discuss any of these state questions, please feel free to join us in the Blog Oklahoma podcast Facebook group. I'll have links to it and to more information about each of these state questions in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. This week's Blog Oklahoma writing suggestion is to write your opinion about any of these state questions and to encourage everyone to go vote on Tuesday, November 6, 2018. Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for Web Ring membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? Then just explore the Web Ring and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. Just visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. Have you registered to vote yet? Here in Oklahoma, you have until October 12, 2018 to get registered. If you're not registered to vote by then, you will not be able to vote in the November 6th general election. In Oklahoma, it's very easy to get registered to vote. You could get a voter registration form from your local county elections board, the post office, the public library, a tag agency, and at many other public locations. Or you can just download a form from the Oklahoma State Elections Board's website at ok.gov elections. Just fill it out and mail it in. In a few days, you'll receive your voter identification card in the mail. That's it. That's all you have to do to be registered voter in Oklahoma. For more information on registering to vote or on voting in Oklahoma, visit the Oklahoma State Elections Board website at ok.gov elections. Well, I'm sure you've noticed the lack of episodes lately. <laughs> Sorry about that. All I can say is a lot of life has happened in between full episodes of the Blog Oklahoma podcast. It hasn't been a whole lot of fun. But I'm not going to go into much detail about it right now. That's a topic for another time. I hope you've enjoyed the smaller bonus episodes I have been able to get out. If you're new here, the Blog Oklahoma bonus episodes are smaller, single topic podcasts that I can get out a little easier. Usually they're about some new service or website I found or just something I really wanted to share at the time. These full Blog Oklahoma podcast episodes are longer, can cover multiple topics, and can take quite a bit of time to research and write. And because of work, life, and other things getting in the way, it really feels like it's taking longer to even put out the bonus episodes. I have several Oklahoma history episodes I really want to get out, but they're still in the research stage. But luckily, I do have a few more bonus episodes in the pipeline that I can get out soon, so I'm kind of happy about that. 
Doing this little podcast hobby of mine has really been rewarding and frustrating all at the same time. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. A big thank you to Nondoc for listing bl the Blog Oklahoma podcast in their list of Oklahoma podcasts. I really appreciate it. And for some reason, they say I'm probably one of the oldest podcasts in the state. That can't be right, can it? I've just been doing it longer, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I'm the oldest podcast in the state, but hey, I appreciate the thought. I have been doing this since, what, 2008? <laughs> oh, well, big thank you to Nondoc. So uh, let me do some business, and let's get this podcast ended. Did you know we have our own cafe press store? There you could purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please just head on over to cafepress.com slash blog Oklahoma podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist on Spotify. There is now well over 36 hours of music for you to enjoy. I'll have links to this and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. I'm happy to announce as of September 23rd, 2018, Blog Oklahoma has... 726 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Hooray! Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.